one hour to the chiropractor. Let's see what we can do. And time's always limited. You gotta think. What's the most important thing? To help Henry find his shoe. Do the it. dog's important. Henry, where's your shoe? I think I heard Mr. Brown holler that he found it. Where was it? Mr. Brown is getting a towel for the seat. Why don't we park this in here? Because there's so much junk in the room. Okay, I don't know if that was the best use of my time. Only had one hour, that was not on the plan. We got a pile of stuff to go over to the holler house. I don't know what animal this is, but guess. I don't know if it's real. It has a tail. This is the new fence stall because they're insulate. They're gonna insulate on the in inner stalls. Hoses for repair, fiber tough posts, fence posts. Never a good idea to set these nets on top of these plastic fence posts. Too many hooks. Whoops. Maybe shouldn't have set all that stuff on top of our honey. Hey guys, what would you say this time next year? We've grown our own honey. What would you say if Justin Rhodes? is finally getting honeybees. This is botten honey. We transfer it from a five gallon bucket to a usable quart size. We're buying enough honey now and we've tackled enough of our other uh, food growing things. It's starting to make sense that we go at honey. Don't misunderstand me for saying this, but honeybees are most likely, a, a honey, I should say. Gr growing honey, in, it's, very well, could very well, most likely be overrated. Did I just say that? Before you click off, or judge. I mean, it's probably not necessarily what's closest to people's hearts. I mean, maybe it is, maybe. And then maybe they have time constraints and certain things like that, then then yeah, honey's it, or you know, maybe they're uh, on a rental and they don't want to break ground. Okay, I get it. Uh, it might make sense with certain restrictions to do honey. But if you have broad acres and you want to follow your heart, you want to grow what's closest to your heart, what you're spending your money on, that's what you're going to be the most successful with. That's going to give you the most bang for the buck. Chances are, sweetener is not your biggest bill. And although it's fun and exciting, it might not make the most sense for you. For us, we began to tackle meat and dairy. When are we going to figure out this thing? I'll be back. I gotta go get a battery for this camera. Okay, bye. I'm back. And bad news. We gotta leave even 15 minutes earlier because we're out of fuel. Tell me about what you built though. Build the wall so it won't flood anymore. All right. Good for you guys. Well, I hope I did the most important thing, which was tidy up. The boys were busy. I think they got the Bromance's new hay bomb pasture ready for tomorrow. Now that it's not gonna be so cold, we're going back into the hills. We got another cold spout. I guess we'll bring them back down. We'll have a winter camp. What's these boards? We're building some airsoft shields. Oh, y'all eating breakfast? Yeah, let's get a little snack. Mr. Brown learning to drive. That's a win. We got Selma parked in here. Uh-huh. Now, I'm on a shoe hunt again. This time, town shoes. Found his other town shoes. Wow, I just I went tight. through the effort to wash these. Oh, really? Oh, okay. yeah. Why are you making that face? I thought they were soaking wet. No, I made no. I just went through the effort to wash them, and you're getting his shoes on. Quick bite of eggs. Did you boys get the fence set up you're for the cute. romance? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Car seat's not in the suburban. It's in the truck. Truck's getting loaded, and he's loading the truck for metal. It's almost filled when I was there. Oh gosh, I'm gonna be in so much trouble if she's gone. Oh, is it loose? Yep, it's on. All right, she should probably just get two car seats. For the longest time, we only, for 20 years, we only had one car. I think I pretty much just finished. Design your best homestead ever, 2024 edition. That's my editor, I just let her know that she's gonna go through and do the editing. How many words is this? Woo, 13,000 words. Guys, a 20,000 word is a proper 
non-fiction book. I dare say hefty is not what you need though. You're short on time, right? Everybody's short on time, money. I'm thinking you could read that in probably just a couple of hours. I'm definitely gonna teach you that in just a couple of hours on February 4th. You guys want a sample of what I was writing today? You want a two minute teaching? Let's start here. When we talk about, we're answering the what to grow, when to grow, where to grow, how to grow. This is not an exhaustive how to, but it is how do thir certain things fit in your system? What's the regenerative idea of, of, of how the design works? Hey, Bob. It's winter, so we're not rotationally grazing. Well, we're feeding in a different spot every day, so I guess we are rotationally grazing. Look at this hay load. Solid hay, concentrated manure. This was a struggling pasture. It's going to explode. I hope you laugh at my antics because I sure am making a fool of myself. Start the two minute teaching. How about no cuts, editor? How about when, we, when I say go, you roll the time and I try to teach this within two minutes. I'm starting my own timer so I can see it myself. Ready? <gasps> two options when it comes to livestock management. Only two. Joel Salatin would call the, give him you two options called rest and sanitation. That's a rotational grazing system. You hit a, you hit, let's say we're, we're grazing here. We hit this and then you move, the, you move the animals on only until the grass has recovered. That's the rest. Well, where's the sanitation comes from? Well, it's not happening today. I guess maybe a little. The, the, the sanitation is from the sun hitting it and sanitizing that ground. So you do that rotation for two reasons. One, so the grass can recover. Grass starts growing back after it's mowed within three days. If that starts growing back on that third, fourth, fifth, sixth day, and then you nip it again with the cows, it's detrimental to the forage. And what cows will do if they're left in a, a continual place over and over again, they, they're like kids. They're gonna eat the ice cream and only the ice cream. They keep going back and eating the ice cream. Well, what's happening in that case? Your weeds are thriving and your edibles are dying, <laughs> literally. You can have your uh, weed, you can have your half your edibles and double your weeds in just a year and vice versa. You can double your edibles and half your weeds with rotational grazing versus continual grazing. So rest and, uh, rest and sanitation, so that's a rotational movement. With cows, you wanna move them every day. At, mo at the worst, every three or four days. Okay, and moving them just one time a year is better than none, so remember that. Pigs need to move every five to 12 days, not return to the spot for 80 days. By the way, cows should not return to the spot probably for about 45 days. Same thing with sheep. Uh, goats, leave them in a spot for a week, give them half the woods, half the grass. Uh, what else we got? Meat chickens, you wanna move them every day to a new ground. Chickens, every, two, every day to every two weeks. Uh, in a two week rotation, give them 150 square foot per chicken. Boy, I'm really going on. Oh boy, how much time do I got? Oh, oh, I'm way over. <laughs> let's, let's finish strong though. Uh, uh, I didn't think I was over. Uh, deep bedding is your only other option. Joel Salatin would call it vibrant decomposition. So in both cases, it's a sanitation method. Sanitize with the sun and rest or sanitize with vibrant decomposition. This deep bedding in here mixed with the manure and in this case spent hay, and in this case spent hay and wood chips for the cows, breaks down. That nitrogen and, and carbon mixture begins to break down things and it absorbs that and keeps it, keeps it sanitary, keeps it warm. Those are your only two options. So rotationally graze, and if you don't have enough property and, and your land hasn't rested enough, hit a deep bedding area or get hit a sacrifice paddock and then pick up again. Um, and then if you, in our case, we don't have enough pasture. We have to deep bed them in the winter. Look at this little guy. We deep bed them in the winter and uh, just feed them hay and we're all good. That, that sheep totally distracted me. I blew the two minutes here, uh, but I assure you, I can teach all this, that and many other concepts in just two hours. If I can't, we'll just go over. Uh, February 4th, 
Everything you need to know for planning your best homestead ever, 2024. Plus, that is the first time, and there's gonna only be a short window of when you'll be able to get this booklet, this 1,200 word, 12,000 word booklet. Once you read it and go through it, you'll go away knowing how to set up a plan for your homestead. Why don't you join us for the workshop February 4th? Ooh! Have you guys seen this door in? We've got the door, the garden kitchen in. I just love this natural light. It's so nice and bright down here. See what Randolph's up to. Randolph has installed the attic fans. They're gigantic. And hopefully we won't have to use as much AC. Fan there. Two fans right there. Oh, uh, what she have you doing today, Randolph? I'm doing these blowers. Blowers and saw. It looks like you put sauna platform in. Yeah. Are you hung up on them? Well, she wants this platform, mm -hmm. but the nozzles has got to be sticking out more. We're not messing around with mold, so Rebecca got these, uh... Amada? Yeah. Blowers? There's a bunch yeah. of tubing. There's about 200 foot of tubing with it. Wow. <laughs> Did I show you all this? A lot has happened. Stove. That's definitely a redundancy. We have the wood boiler, gas heat, and then finally that wood stove. Oh, looks like Rebecca is back with the citrus order. So how do you avoid the grocery store? And still support your citrus habit. There's more. This is all she told us to bring. What's going on? You drove an hour one way, and this is a co-op order. Yes, this stays in the fridge, in the in the thing. And this is in season. They're from California. Those are huge oranges. Yes. Those look amazing. They're um. That's as big as a grapefruit. Look at that. All of them. Box of lemons. That's a whole box. Of, who eats raisins? Our children. There's more. What is this? Potatoes. Heck yeah. Sweet potatoes. That looks more like a Rhodes food order. <laughs> Whoa! You're gonna spoil y'all's dinner. Hello, oranges. Are you gonna be able to eat? Yep. Yeah. Somebody likes the spaghetti. Oh my gosh, look at that orange. It's, it's, it's as big hand. as your head. How many oranges have y'all eaten today? I don't know. Five or six. I'm glad you got eight boxes. La la let, la la let me be free.